Are you wanting to live in a tiny home on wheels or are you currently building a tiny home on wheels? Today, we're gonna go over what products we use in our van. My husband and I have been traveling in our van for over two and a half years. And here's some of the things that we are going to go over and products that we are using. Come on in. So our van is a little bit different than your average van. A lot of people like to go with light colors. We went with a darker themed van. We based it off from old Norwegian churches called Stav churches. So the idea behind that was basically to have things a little more rustic, darker look to them. Um, as you can see, yeah, we got the dark ceiling, got lots of wood tones as well, and our floor is actually a scratched stone. Um, that way, if you put scratches on it, you won't even notice it. Starting with the kitchen area here, we got this countertop from Ikea. We actually don't recommend it. It um, hasn't held up well over time. What we do really like is this Liaker faucet. It's definitely pretty unique. Uh, we like it because it kind of has like a serpent, kind of abstract serpent dragon look. And on the churches in Norway, um, what they would have a lot of the time on the peaks and such is a dragon. So it fit our theme really well. Works super great. Pull it out like that. It's got different ways it works as well. Um, super satisfied with that purchase. Good pressure. For the sink, we did purchase that from Ikea, and we do like that. It's super durable and dark toned to go along with everything else. As far as the pumps and our plumbing system, we'll get to that a little bit later on. So up here, due to the nature of the Ford Transit van, it was a lot easier for us to make it open shelving here. And we actually really like it because we get to display all of these cool plants and such, and we have a 3D Stav church here. Over here, we got this one line hanging artificial plant. It hangs down 25 inches and this little planter here is three inches high. And we really like it um, from a distance. Yeah, you can't tell that it's plastic and even up close, it definitely looks very realistic compared to a lot of them. So we really like the idea of having a lot of plants up here um, simply because yeah, it adds that rustic feel to it and adds a, some pop of color into the van. And our tiny home safety is very important as it should be anywhere. But here we have on this open shelving, we also have the Kid Carbon Monoxide Alarm. It takes two AA batteries um, and it'll alert you when you need to replace those. So that's definitely helped keep us a little more secure and safe in our van. Over here, to add a little ambiance to our van, we have the Marlin Rechargeable Lantern. Um, it's super cool, it has a flickering light mode. Looks a little weird on camera, but in person it's really awesome, um, nice and soothing. And it has, um, I think, four or five other modes as well um, with different lighting that really helps to if you want to take it outside or just, yeah, different moods. So we found some really cool cabinet handles on Amazon. Uh, they're called the Rizbe cabinet handles. Uh, we have three and a half inches or two and a half, depending on the size of the cabinet door, uh, just to make it look a little more uh, fitting for the size. They're really nice because when they're super durable. We've had them for over two and a half years now. Um, there's no like staining of your fingers, so it's got a good varnish on it and it just helps with the overall theme. Nice subtle wood tone to it. One of the other important things when driving your van is how you are you going to keep the cabinets closed. What we did is used a Vamice magnetic baby locks. They're super simple. We've got a lot of pots and pans in our drawers right now and holds everything in place. They come with a magnet, just pull it right there, and simple as that. When we're stopped at a location, they're also super convenient because you're able to turn a little toggle there, and then you're able to open and close without the magnets. We used to have a 12 volt chest fridge in here. It didn't work very well. Now we have a Magic Chef mini fridge in the back. When we did have that fridge, we did put in these Vidania heavy duty drawer slides, um, super simple. They hold up to 235 pounds, I believe. You just pull up on little clips and slides right out. So now, as you can see, we got quite a bit of stuff in here now and it's supporting that weight very well. So we just utilize this area for a different purpose now. One of the things we didn't think about as we were building our van was how we're gonna get on this bed. As you can see, it's quite high here. So what we did is we hopped on Amazon, got a black Varbu Camp stepping stool. This has been super useful for our circumstance. It fits in with the decor. Never had any issues with stability. The only con to it is we did have to put some 
little couple rubber stoppers on the bottom of it because it does kind of slide on our floor a little bit. Um, we have laminate click lock flooring. One of the unique things about our van that we did is we utilized dead space. A lot of vans will just have pretty much nothing right here. What we did is make half cabinets and those have been a great help to add extra storage. Our first year on the road, one of the problems we were having was service in different areas. So there are some places where you'd look on iOverlander app and things like that and be like, oh, we can't go there because we don't have cell service. We do have a WeBoost and that works pretty well. Um, I should say very well. But um, being able to work full time from the road and being able to go to areas where there was no cell service, we decided to get Starlink. It's been super useful for us working full time on the road. It's allowed us to go places where before we've had to avoid. Um, the only thing that you have to think about with these is just make sure that there's not a lot of tree coverage where you're at because even if there's kind of a minimal amount, it is going to affect your service. Where we're at right now, we're getting really good service because we have no trees. The only other thing is no, of note is we do a lot of uploading in our job. So the upload speeds are vastly lower than the download speed, which is typical. So in most circumstances, it's going to be a great addition for anyone. Back here, we have our bedroom slash living area because in a van, you have to utilize all the seating area that you can. So we do sit on that at some times. Our mattress, we chose a Zynus Green Tea Memory Foam 6 inch. We absolutely love this. We had a van before this as well. And we had the same mattress. We decided to repurchase that for this one because we liked it so much. If we lived in a house, we would purchase one for that as well. We chose the 6 inch Short Queen for several reasons. One, it gave us more area and space to be able to build this out an extra six inches so more storage and it also yeah just allows more space throughout the van it gives you enough room for you to be able to turn on the mattress without hitting each other and the six inches that depth is great for being able to sit up in bed and also for you not to feel any sort of planks or anything underneath as i talked about earlier our build is based off from norwegian churches so what they have on a lot of those Norwegian churches are shingles on the side. So what we decided to do back here was kind of make a feature wall. This for me was probably the funnest part of the build, just being able to add something extra and unique to the van. So what we did to put these up here was use some brad nails and I believe a little bit of liquid nails as well. Um, they've held up over time pretty well. The only thing to be aware of is when I built these out, or when we built this out, we were in Phoenix, Arizona, near that area, and it was a lot drier. In retrospect, I should have had these a little more spaced out just to take into account the moisture in different areas of the country. While building out this van, we actually slept in a empty cargo van and temperatures reached below freezing. So we used some leftover 3M thin slate that we used in our wall uh, to keep warm at night. And this is where the blanket comes from. We really like the 3M Thinsulate. It's easy to put up. It doesn't get all that crud all over you. It's kept us cool and warm depending on where we are in the country. We've used denim and spray insulation in previous builds and we prefer this out of all three of those. Living in a small space, you have to make different areas multifunctional. So here we just have general seating, kind of hanging out area. And also we can turn it into a workspace by having the Lagoon table mount. So this is super simple. It's been super handy. You just slide this onto there. You can tighten it with this little handle on the side here. Put this guy on. Nice thing about this is it literally can go pretty much anywhere you want. So that's nice to have in a van just because when people are walking around and thing, you can easily just move it out of the way. What we did is put some excess butcher block on top of here. So overall, this has been a great addition to our space and helping us be able to utilize everything as like a work area. So the age old question of, should you have a dedicated space for your bathroom and your toilet in a van? So what we decided was we definitely wanted it, but we wanted a hybrid system. So we have it as an area for seating and we have it as our toilet slash shower area. We have a cutty composting toilet, not the biggest fan, but it does get the job done. What we did to waterproof this was we put on a couple layers of red guard and then we put on some vinyl sheet rolling and then some silicon in the corners. We got this a based out shower curtain. The way we make this work and to utilize this space is we made a rectangle piece here out of PVC pipe. We got some simple little strings right here. 
and then we have hooks up top. We just simply hook it up there. I'm super glad that we stumbled upon this on Amazon because it goes with the fit and feel of our van. And the really cool thing about this as well, if you don't have a shower liner, you do not need it with this. We've had no issues. Welcome to the back of my van, AKA the garage. We opted for a lofted bed just because we don't have to set up the bed every night. One less thing you have to do. And the other absolutely awesome feature about that is how big our garage is underneath. So we have about, I believe it's about 70 inches long by however big a queen is wide. And it's about 37 inches tall. So it's just a massive area to store lots of things. And as you can see on the back here, there is a netting and that is actually just a screen for a single car garage that worked for us. We did have to up in the corner, sort of tuck it in behind the cabinet to make it work. But we really like that it is magnetic. So when you open it to try to get in the bottom of the garage, it just comes back together. Really great feature. It was very, very budget friendly and reasonable. In our van, we decided to go with water jugs versus a tank system. Being living on the road for over two and a half years now, there's been a few different times where we can't get a hose to the water source. So being able to take these jugs and carry them over to the water source has been a lot easier and made it where we can get water in a lot more places. So these are the Reliance water jugs. They are seven gallons and they've been working well for us. We're able to stack them in the back. We have five total. We're able to stack them and we ratchet strap them down so they don't move while driving if they're full. With these Reliance systems, it's been very easy because of the cap it came with. You can just flip it over and have a little spigot for water to come out. Um, we also have been able to create a system where we used a quick release hose system and attached it to the nozzle with a PVC going down. So after the water goes through the PVC pipe up out through the hoses and right through our SureFlow three gallons per minute of water pump. This thing, we have had no issues with it, not a single time. It is paired with a SureFlow accumulator, which it helps create the pressure for it to get all the way, roughly 10 to 13 feet up to the front where our sink is. So the SureFlow, it is ran off of a 12 volt system, which is what our whole van runs off of. And it's been working really well for us. Storage is something that is really tough to find and figure out inside, especially a van in those smaller size rigs. We were juggling these shoes around the van so often, we tried to do some plastic bags and canvas bags hanging on the back of the door that did not work. I was able to find the shoe rack, which actually comes with some extenders, but we didn't need those. Found the shoe rack, mounted it to a plank right here, and this has actually been working out really well for us. We've had no issues with it. And I really love the fact that it puts them at an angle. We don't have to worry about them falling out when we open the door. And it also is pretty slim that when we do shut the door, we do have just enough space in between here for the shoes to go. So this is a product I would highly recommend when traveling full time somewhere to store your shoes. And really, you probably could use it for other products and things, but it's been working out well for us on our door here. Working out on the road is not always easy to figure out because sometimes you're out like where we are right now, out in the wilderness. We actually have a full setup, as you can see right here, um, of workout things from a folding bench, a pull-up bar, adjustable weights. We have some bands and other things. I'm not gonna go into full details of that right now, but if you are interested in us creating a video of how we work out on the road and which products we use in order to be able to work out, just comment below and we can dive into that. But I'm gonna head over to the other side of our van here and talk about our electrical system and how we can stay off grid for many, many days, weeks, and really months because most of the time we're not hooked up to power. And doesn't mean we're depriving ourselves of anything. We actually have a microwave and an instant pot. Before I dive into our electrical system, I wanna share with you our WeBoost. Abe mentioned it earlier inside the van, this thing, we didn't buy it for the first few months that we were on the road, but we quickly realized that we needed to amplify our signal a little bit more, especially when we really get out here in the wilderness. And this thing has truly helped be able to get a few more bars to maybe make that connection or to be able to check the email or make that call. So the Drive Reach OTR WeBoost is the version we have. They have an outdoor antenna and there also is an indoor antenna that we have right up by the bed. And sometimes you can be a few feet from the indoor antenna or other times you have to have it right on the back of your phone. 
just to be able to get that service um, a little bit stronger depending on where you're at. But that is um, a wee boost. I would definitely recommend it if you are full-time traveling or you're often out in the wilderness. So it is ran off of a 12 volt system. We just have it plugged in the cigarette lighter right here. Um, it also can be plugged into the front of your car as well. So our electrical system is right back here. It is a 12 volt system. We have 400 amp hours of lithium batteries. We have a 3000 watt inverter. And then right on the roof, we have 600 watts of solar. And that's what is able to create power for us in our camper van that has nothing to do with the van and battery up front. And we're able to run an instant pot to cook some meals. We can charge our laptops. We do 99% of the time boondocking and so that means we're not never plugged in so it's been really cool to be able to stay off grid and just charge our things that we need and live um, just based off of the solar we have the 3000 watt inverter by reno g and it is an inverter charger which means on the outside of our van we have a plug-in for a regular house outlet 15 amp so if we're visiting friends or family or even at campgrounds we're able to plug in if we are needing that with this 3000 watts, that means we can run higher things like our instant pot, our microwave. If you had a blender, something that does high, that initial impulse high voltage coming out, this is able to handle many, if not most of those things. We went with that because we really wanted a microwave in our van and having this 3000 watt allows that. We've discovered that if you use four out with these units, the power coming through the unit to your appliances is a lot better along with the charging aspect. This is our second unit we've had. The first one, we're not quite sure what happened with that, but we were able to get it replaced under warranty, which was sort of a pain. But we were able to get a new unit and we've had this one for over a year and it's worked well and suited our needs. So right tucked back in here a little bit further is our Victron 121230 non-isolating DC to DC charger. So what happens is while we're driving, the van is alternator is able to send power through the DC to DC charger and charge up our batteries. Works out really well when we're driving to a new destination. And if the sun is not out where we're able to charge up top, this is a great addition to any type of 12 volt solar system. Just because being able to charge our batteries back up just from a little driving is a really good peace of mind. So I'm really happy that we have this. We did have a unit before that was by another leading brand that did not work out. Um, and we replaced it with this Victron and we were happy because it is outperformed it by leaps and bounds. We have had absolutely zero issues with this one since we've installed it. How we're able to power our camper van is our 12 volt system and that includes these lithium batteries they are lpf max batteries nice thing about these is it has a couple smart features to them one would be the bluetooth that is right directly in them so you have an app that you can connect to and it'll show you what the volts are how much percentage and how much is coming in and leaving it also has a um, self-heating mechanism in it which is also handy for when those temps get really cold. We've tested out a few different batteries and these ones have outshined all of the rest. So if we were ever to need some additional batteries, we would recommend these LPF Max batteries. So another thing we have in our van electrical system is this on off disconnect kill switch for our system. So I think it's a really key thing to have because if you're working on your system, being able to just turn that off and disconnect the power to the batteries while you're working on something is, in my opinion, a good safety feature to have. And for how the price, how budget friendly it is, definitely add one of those to your system. One of the last key components to our electrical system is our Renogy. It's all the way in the very back, it's hard to see, but our Renogy 40 MPPT charge controller. So what we use that for is we have 600 watts of solar on our roof. It comes down through some of these wires here. It goes into the charger, converts it, does its thing, and then brings it back into our battery so that we can then discharge all that and be able to run everything we have off of our system. That MPPT charge controller has been well for us, hasn't failed, and we've had no issues with it. So I'm pretty happy with the purchase. So for the first year of travel, we actually never used leveling blocks. So what we have here are the Camcoat Fasten XL gray leveling blocks. And the thing about these are, it's really nice, like they're called leveling blocks, to get our rig on level. So when we're sleeping, we're not tilted, or better yet, if we're cooking and you put something on the counter and it rolls, 
it's just harder to cook when you're on a tilt. So nice thing I like about this exact set is it has this handle here that you can screw out. And the very bottom piece here works as the base. So when you are using the handle, the whole thing works as a case, carrying case, super nice and handy to have. You can see right here, we're using one, two, three, four of them. There's a variety of different ways you can stack them up. Uh, it comes with a 10 pack and they've been able to suit our needs um, depending on how unlevel we are. We haven't really needed more than that. So it's a really good handy packet. They've really lasted us quite a while. There have been a couple spots where we were on gravel and they got scuffed up a bit or a little um, part of it has been bent, but overall the whole thing is solid and I'm really happy with the quality of these. So if you are someone who travels full time or find yourselves out in areas that are a little unlevel and you want some levelness to your sleeping or cooking, I would recommend the Camco Fashion XLs. Very happy with them. Thanks for taking a tour of our van. I hope it gave you some good ideas. If there were some products in there that you want to know a little bit more details about, or we may have missed something that you do want to know about, comment down below and subscribe for more walkthroughs like this to give you ideas for, like you said, for your build.